Hello and welcome to another episode of the Grow My Salon Business Podcast. I'm your host, Anthony Whitaker, and as I always say, it's great to have you here with us today. I've been a hairdresser, I've been in this industry for many years, and I've worked in many countries, I've had that great privilege, and I've also had a great career. And I 100% believe that as a salon owner, and I know most of my audience are salon owners, that you really are the backbone of the industry. And I imagine that you very rarely get thanked for everything you do, despite the fact that you survive and thrive through your own determination and grit and hard work. And you deserve to win. And I thoroughly believe that you deserve to succeed because I know that you get up every day and you get back in there and you do it again by serving and taking care of clients and serving and taking care of your team and coming up with new ideas about what it takes to run a successful salon business. And I'm here to help you in any way that I possibly can. So thank you for joining me here once again. Now at the time of recording this episode, we are about to open our money online course. So for those salon owners who are listening and recognize that money and being master of your finances is an essential topic to get on top of, then visit growmysalonbusiness.com forward slash course forward slash money. Because when you get clarity and have the confidence that you need to handle the financial side of your business, that will be the best investment that you have ever made. Whether we're talking about a financial investment or the investment of your time and the discipline to work on your business. So if you want to find out more, then go to growmysalonbusiness.com forward slash course forward slash money and join the waitlist so that you get priority notification as soon as enrollment opens. And I'll also be sure to put that link in the show notes for today's podcast. So with all that said, let's dive into today's episode, which is just with me. This is the era of what I call the side hustle. I'm sure you're familiar with that term, meaning developing another stream or streams of income, which sounds good. And it's a bit of a catchphrase these days on social media. The term side hustle might be new, but having multiple streams of income certainly isn't. And I think that on the back end of COVID that a lot of people realise that potentially having another stream of income was probably a good idea. Now, salon owners will sometimes ask me for advice about potentially developing a second stream of income, whether that's by starting a coaching business, which seems to be the flavor of the month for a lot of people, or wanting to start a podcast or developing an online course, or perhaps it's getting into session work, editorial, magazine work, or wanting to be an educator, whether that's doing live classes or online courses. These are all things that I've either done or are currently doing, and they all provide reward, so a side hustle, both in terms of personal fulfillment and the potential for financial gain. And they might all be opportunities that are also the right thing for other people to pursue, but they're definitely not the right thing for a lot of people to pursue. So before we dig into it, let me just back up a little bit first and put some context around my journey and why I'm so adamant about saying that. My career started off a very long time ago as an apprentice and then a stylist, then a full-time teacher and creative director at Sassoon Salons and Schools in London, where I also dabbled with the world of session work, which was an area of hairdressing that I didn't actually particularly enjoy. And I weren't that good at it either because it's a very different skill again from being a good salon hairdresser. After 10 years at Sassoon, I then went on to open my own salons and I combined that with still being an industry educator because most of my time at Sassoon's was about the education side of the industry. I did work in the salons as well, but I spent most of my time in the schools. The education part for me when I opened up my own business 
was doing classes on Sundays and Mondays using my own salon as a venue. And I did that so that I didn't have the added expense of hiring venues, hotel rooms, etc. And eventually, though, I moved on to doing seminars around the country and eventually around the world under my own name, often aligned with manufacturers where I primarily presented hairdressing shows and taught hairdressing skills. But as is often the case, I reached a point where I had to make a choice. And that choice for me was, should I focus on my salons, of which at that time there were three of them, with one of them that also doubled up as an education center, or should I focus on being a full-time educator? Now, I don't like it when someone starts a sentence with, the reality is, but the reality is that there are only so many hours in the day And when you have salons to run, that takes up an enormous amount of time and energy and focus if you really want those salons to succeed. They don't just run themselves. And if you're focusing on other things, in my case teaching, then your salon business will suffer and you'll end up subsidizing the salon's revenue with your teaching income, which defeats the point of doing it in the first place. And let's face it, that's not a particularly smart thing to be doing. Typically, that journey all starts off as an exciting opportunity with very low commitment in terms of time and travel. But if it starts to increase, and that's assuming that you're both good enough and lucky enough that it is increasing, then the commitment of time and travel and lost revenue from the salon starts to increase with it. And a common problem is that Most hairdressers who get into what I call the traveling educator role will totally underestimate the preparation time, the travel time, the lost salon revenue, and I haven't even mentioned the impact that will have on your health, your home life, your relationships with your significant other, children if you're lucky enough to have them, etc. You see, when you first start out traveling, whether it's traveling to do hair for fashion week or doing industry hair shows, At the beginning, you're probably enjoying the break from the salon routine. I know that I definitely were. And the hopping on and off of aeroplanes and staying in hotels and eating at restaurants and, let's face it, the round of applause and the feeling of self-importance that goes with it can become very addictive for a lot of people. And I totally get it. But that's where you need to be clear about the balance of time that you can afford to give it and still genuinely be on top financially, because it's not a hobby, remember, it's part of your business. Because, you know, there's no point in you earning money as an educator or whatever else your side hustle is going to be, if that money goes straight back into propping up the salon. For me, when I was at the crossroads of having to make a decision about whether to go all in on being a traveling educator, or focusing on my salons, it was a tough decision to make. But I was sort of fortunate in a way in that the universe conspired because the decision was sort of made for me. Because one day out of the blue, someone made me an offer to buy my salon business. And that doesn't come along every day. So I saw that as a sign that I was meant to sell the salons, which I did. And I then focused 100% on building the business I have today, which is called Grow My Salon Business, where we focus on the education side of the industry, whether that's through books or online courses or coaching or podcasts or live seminars and doing keynote presentations. And you should also recognize that not every side hustle produces money. In fact, for many of them, they're just a bottomless pit of you actually pouring money into it to keep it going and keep it alive. For example, let me just give you an example of this. This is episode 255 of this podcast. And myself and two other people, Melinda, my wife, and another person, we spend a minimum of two days in total for each episode, researching, writing, recording, editing, and then getting it out there. So that's 255 episodes at an average of two days per episode. So that's 510 days work. And we aren't sponsored. So it's completely 
255 episodes, 510 days of work for free. But that's another story because not everything is about making money. Some things are a bit of a passion project. Some things are about giving back. And some things do have a, let's just call it another purpose to keep a profile in the industry and bring other people to a wider audience that I'm lucky enough to be able to do. But the point I want to make is that while there is nothing wrong with developing a secondary interest and potentially the additional cash flow that you hope comes with it, whether it's through being an educator or doing session work or shows and magazines, or whether it's to develop a coaching business or online learning platforms, or as I said, podcasts, regardless of what it is, it's going to take you away from your core business to some degree. And if you own a salon, your core business is working behind the chair and running a salon. And if whatever you do takes you away from your business, then whatever money you're making in your secondary business interest will often end up being poured into the salon to subsidize the loss of income because you're not there. And I don't just mean the income that you personally produce, because typically when you're not there, when the leader is not there, then the productivity of other people also starts to go down the toilet, so to speak. Now, I can speak about that with great conviction because I experienced all of that when I had my salons. And over the last 40 years, I've seen many other salon owners also experience that. You see, one thing I know with absolute 100% certainty is that running and building a salon requires 100% of your focus. So unless you have business partners, or at the very least, a very strong management team, whereby someone else is 100% focused on the salon operations, then your salon's going to suffer if you're not there. And that is just a harsh reality. Like I said, for me, I realized that I had to make a choice, and I did, or the universe did for me. And that choice then allowed me to focus 100% on my education business. I think that the lure for a lot of people is the potential for making money. And I'll stress the word potential because, like I said, while some people do make good money from education and podcasts and coaching, etc., the reality, there's that word again, the reality is that most people don't. And that's at least partially because they totally underestimate the amount of work and time and commitment and just discipline and money that goes into it. You see, I've got lots of friends who own salons and who have always focused on developing their salon business. They love cutting hair. They love their clients and they love standing behind the chair four or five days a week. And they love building a team and a successful salon business. And most of them have done well out of it financially. But I'm not saying don't pursue other options. But I am saying that it will impact on your salon business. And in most cases, that will be a negative financial impact. I mentioned COVID earlier on, and I think that since COVID, I'm seeing and hearing a lot of salon owners who want to get into different areas, particularly coaching, because they think it will be easier and they think that they have something to offer. And they may very well have something to offer. But don't assume that just because you've been running your own salon business successfully, well, congratulations if that's you, but don't assume that that means that you'll be an effective coach and be able to help other people to grow their business because coaching others is very different to running your own salon, no matter how successful you may have been at it. And I think that sometimes people are drawn to coaching because they think it will be easier than running a salon, but it's not easier. In fact, in many ways, it's actually probably harder and there's a lot more accountability and there's a lot more risk that you're putting on the table if you're advising people how to run their business and what to do within their business. That's a big responsibility. And it's an entirely separate business to running a salon. And so you have to develop this entirely separate business and you have to learn and invest in it and market it to get clients. And I see many people all over the world, different countries in our industry, that dip a toe into coaching 
And I see them coming unstuck because they don't realize what it is that's really involved. Because if you decide to become an educator or a business coach, you're always looking for the next client. And that requires time and it requires ongoing investment. And the cash flow from both of those roles, whether it's coaching or being an educator, is erratic at best. In the hairdressing industry today, it seems that everything except owning a salon gets glamorized as being better than salon ownership. Whereas when I started hairdressing, it was quite the opposite. Owning a salon was perceived as being something very glamorous to do, to build a business, build a team and build a brand. So perhaps instead of looking at other opportunities, why don't you glamorize being a successful salon owner and putting every ounce of your focus and determination there so that you build a great business and that other people aspire to be part of it. I'm not saying it's easy. I know it's not easy. It's hard. It's always been hard and it will always be hard. It's just a different sort of hard depending on the generation that you're in, the, 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 the consumer expectations and the expectations of every new generation that enter the workforce and the technology that you have available to you, etc, etc, etc. But owning a salon and building a team and a brand is a very cool thing to do. It's not easy. As I said, in fact, it's bloody hard and at times it can be soul destroying and it can be a bit of a thankless task. Let's not pretend otherwise. But owning a business isn't meant to be easy. No one ever said it was. But if you commit to it, if you do the work, if you invest the time and the money into your education, it can give you an incredible lifestyle and enable you to build a team and a brand and expand and create careers and opportunities for others. And as much as I recognize that there is a need and a place for that independent contractor, I totally get it, and all its shapes and forms, that business model will never create the sort of aspirational businesses that attracted people into this industry previously. And that's a really important statement. And as this industry continues down the path of self-employed or chair rented or independent contractors or freelance or whatever feel good term we use, the reality is that we're becoming seen more as a hobby, more as a part time gig until something better comes up rather than an amazing career choice that can give you a great life. I come from a time where there were more bigger salons. And creating an aspirational brand and building a beautiful space and creating a, a great experience for clients and team members that wanted to work in that beautiful space and creating a career path and training and creating opportunities for everyone to grow and succeed was a, a really rewarding at every level, not just financially. It was a really rewarding thing to do. And bit by bit, you see that being eroded bit by bit. You see that disappearing as people start to become more focused just on them, them as an independent, them as a freelancer, whatever the term is that you're going to give it. But as I said, I totally recognize that that is a market, that that is the world that we live in, that there will be now a lot more independents or freelancers or self-employed people than what there were ever before. But don't for one minute think that that doesn't have a very real impact on this industry as a whole going forward. And that, I think, is one of the reasons why people do start to look for a side hustle, because perhaps for some people, running a salon is not only harder than it was before, but it's also less profitable. But my message is that for most people, instead of looking for a side hustle, that you would be better to focus on doubling down on building an amazing salon business of your own. Because the thing is, is that salons that are ran well have many advantages, including having great cash flow, and if you run them properly, you can make a consistent and a very good living and you can build a great business in the process that benefits you, your team and your clients. So before we wrap up, and I know I've been on a bit of a soapbox here and having a bit of a rant, but before we wrap up, my advice is 
to pursue your dreams, whatever they are, because you can succeed in many different ways in this industry. There are opportunities to build something special. There are opportunities to be part of something special. And there are opportunities for some people to branch off in different directions and to create a side hustle that may or may not be financially rewarding. But remember, not everything can be just about the money. But if you want to have a successful salon and develop a side hustle as well, then I highly recommend that you build a salon business that is financially successful first. And if you do that, then do it in such a way that the salon business can run without you having to be there all the time before you start diverting your attention and your financial resources to do something else. Otherwise, you're going to end up with two businesses, neither of which are performing properly. And that's the last thing that you want. And that's also the last thing that I want for you. So with that said, we need to start winding this episode up. But before we do, we have multiple free resources on our website from our weekly podcast, which you're currently listening to, to the Two Minute Salon Manager videos, as well as our paid for resources, whether it's our books, our one-to-one coaching or our online courses. Now, relative to today's podcast, as well as the online course for money, which I mentioned at the uh, top of this episode, and I'll have the link for that in the show notes, there are a couple of resources that I also want to point you towards. The first is my books, which are currently at half price, but I can't guarantee how long they will remain at 50% discount. The Grow series of books is made up of Grow One Super Stylist, which is all about getting the individual stylist to understand that ultimately they are responsible for how busy they are and therefore how much they earn. The Super Stylist book gives them the tools and the understanding of what they need to do to become more productive. Grow to management is all about you, Uh, you meaning the owner and the manager. And what you need to focus on as the owner or manager to get more organized, to create systems and to free you up from the business. Grow three team is all about what it takes to recruit, train and nurture a team of stylists. And finally, Grow for marketing is all about how to attract more clients, turn them into regulars and keep them as long as possible. So to wrap up, thank you for listening to this week's episode of the Grow My Salon Business Podcast. And if you know someone else that needs to hear this particular episode, then make sure that you share it with them. So until next week, that's bye for now.